president of the Lord. Yeah. So come with me to the book of Mark, the fifth chapter, and we are going to begin in the 24th verse. share with you a book that I read about 25 years ago. It's entitled The Chemistry of the Blood. Mm. It is by M.R. Dehan, M.D. Dr. Dehan was a physician, a surgeon, who later became a pastor. Many of you know this book. He was the founder of the radio Bible class, and his sons continues that ministry today. There's a TV program entitled Day of Discovery. But, but in this book, in, in that first page in this book, he makes this statement. The only thing, and I'm quoting him, the only thing that gives life to our teaching and power to the word of God is this fact. Blood is the very life and power of the gospel. Wow. Let me back it up for you. He, he said, if somebody may not believe me, but come with me to Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, and you will find these words. This is how Dr. Dion backed it up. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, it reads, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given you blood to sprinkle upon the altar as an atonement for your souls. It is the blood that make atonement, because it is the life. Old Testament Leviticus, but God manifested himself into the Son, and Jesus shed blood for us on Calvary. Yes, he did. Yes. So that we might have life, and life eternally yes. with him. Right. Now, now I, I got to thinking about what, what Dr. Dehan said, and, and the Holy Spirit said, I want you to verbalize it this way, in the words from this song. There is power. Oh, yes. Power makes me want to move. One of the All right, yes. In the precious blood of the Lamb. I'm thinking about Andre Crouch's sister, because she can sing that song. And I just saw there is power. Power. Oh, yes. Wonder working power. That's right. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Yes. So you see where I'm going this morning. Right. This the subject of this man. The personal story of healing. Body, mind, spirit, and soul. Using the woman with the issue of blood. Yes. And I need to tell you this morning, beloved, this is not a story of fear. It is not a story of hopelessness. It is not a story of self-pity. It is just the opposite. It is a story of believing, of cleansing, of compassion, of courage, of determination, of faith, of freedom, healing, hope, joy, love, peace, spiritual growth, Come on. Yeah. trusting, yeah. wholeness, yeah. and believing. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, it is my story. Yeah. And it just might be yeah. one of your stories. Come on now. This woman, she suffered a chronic abdominal <laughs> bleeding disorder for 12 years. Now, it, it, it could have been a fibroid tumor. Perhaps it could have been what we call in the NICU a miss A B, a miscarriage. And back in the day, 
there was no such thing as a DNC right. to clean her wound, to keep her from getting infection, and to release her. Amen. You never know who you're moving away from. Amen. Amen. There was a man, many of you may have, may have known him, by the name of Flag. Flag was a very comical person. He would come up in Southern Baptist Church. He'd walk in where he know he's been out all night. May have a little bit too much to drink. But Flag pipped on into the church. And he would sit down in the pew. And I would sit in the back and I would just see somebody go to the right. I would see somebody go to the left. But Flag just sat where he sat. And then all of a sudden, the minister of music would start the choir, and here was Flag directing that choir, moving on. Right, Brother right. Flag had a mental disorder because he had a twin brother who was killed. And he never quite got over it, but he knew something about music. Right, right. And he would just help DJ direct that choir. But I watched how people would move away from him. And there was a church event. They were going to Louisville. And I used to talk, and DJ and Brett would all, we would sometimes we would always connect with Flag. And he wanted to go on this trip. So I asked Pastor Milton, I said, if, if I got Flag some clean clothes, and he didn't drink the night before, would it be OK? if he went on the trip and he gave me this look. I said, it's going to be all right. <laughs> he said, are you going? I said, uh huh. but DJ and Brett will be there. So we went and got flagged a nice suit, a nice overcoat. We couldn't quite get his shoes the correct size. But Flag came on into the church that Sunday, sat down in his chair, and guess what? Nobody moved. That's right. That's right. And he went on on that trip and had a glorious time in the Lord. And uh, sometime later, Brother Flag got home, called home to be with the Lord. Mm. But this woman, and you men bear with me this morning. I know it's a woman about a uh, message about us women, but bear with me. This woman not only suffered embarrassment. She suffered emotionally. The doctors playing tricks with her mind, pretending to heal her. How many doctors have we have gone to that we didn't get a right diagnosis from her? They wanted to tell us what they thought we had and not what we actually had. And wanted to give us medicine that we shouldn't have had. And so we move on to the next one. But they pretended to heal her, but instead they deceived her, making her condition worse, stripping her of financial, taking all of her financial security away. This woman so suffered socially in the Jewish community, she was labeled unclean uh -huh. because she was bleeding. She, she couldn't come into the synagogue. Now, I just told you about Brother Flag, but how many of us have run people out of the church because of what they used to be? And, 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 and we bring that up to their mind, and they decide, well, I don't need to be in there because somebody is reminding me of how I used to be, not how God has blessed the change in my life now. Come on. But, but, she, but she couldn't attend worship service. And, and perhaps this woman was married. She couldn't be with her husband. She couldn't sleep in the same room. She couldn't even be in the same house with him. Her family was in disarray. In the neighborhood that she lived in, she was a social outcast because they would see her coming. And you can imagine all the sorts of things that they would say, oh, we smell her before she even got there. Mm -hmm. 
They look up, he's not giving her any remorse of humanity, of pity. Rather than they just talked about it, let's just move on the other side of the street. I can tell you, my brothers and sisters, that a blood loss makes you suffer physically. It will give you anemia. This woman was anemic. She lost all of the physical strength. I could see her just walking, maybe stooped over, ashamed of what was happening to her. But I stand here to tell you, but her story takes a turn. She, she starts to remember. She starts to recall all the stories, even though the neighbors didn't want to talk to her, even though she couldn't go to the synagogue, she remembers the stories that she had been told about Jesus. Mm. Some say he healed a paralyzed man. Some say he took a, a man who had a withered hand and he healed his hand in front of the Sadducees and the Pharisees who didn't like what he was doing. Some say, she said, I'm recalling that he even raised a widow's son from the dead. But this day, he happened to be in her neighborhood. He was in the neighborhood where Jarvis lived. You can pronounce it Jerry, Jarvis, but he was in his neighborhood. And she thought, uh-huh, this is close to me. This may be the last opportunity I may have to get close to Jesus. <coughs> she started encouraging herself. I will not be intimidated this day. You say, we're still standing. I will not be intimidated this day while I'm still standing by the church folks, by my neighbors, by my family to get close to Jesus. I'm going to struggle on out of here smelling stains on my clothes. I'm going to focus my mind on getting close to Jesus. I am determined this day while I'm still standing to be healed. I'm willing to get down on my hands and knees. I'm willing to crawl because I'm fixed on Jesus. I don't need to grab hold of him. I don't need to grab hold of his complete garment. I just want to get close enough to catch a him, to catch a thread of his garment. You see, I'm going to be healed today. I started out this morning yeah. with the faith yeah. the size of a mustard seed. Yeah. Come on now. Come on now. My faith is, is building up inside of me. Right. I am going to get close enough yeah. Yeah. to touch my Jesus. Yeah. If my Jesus now. <laughs> because I know the stories. I know I'm going to be healed yeah. today. Come on now. I got my eyes fixed. Can't you see her? The crowd sees her coming. And they part ways. She said, yeah, part the way. <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> my eyes is fixed on that man. Right, right, that right. man you told me about Jesus. Yeah. Because I'm going to be yeah. healed today yeah. while I'm yeah. still staying. Yeah. I got my eyes fixed. I got him, he's got his back to me. That's okay. I need to get down just a little bit more. I need to just 
reach down. I'm, I'm down on my knees. Uh -huh. And I see a, a thread. <laughs> and, 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 and Lord, my strength is trying to get away from me. Yeah. But I see this thread. Yeah. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I almost got it. <laughs>
He was just going to be a very large boy. 703 AM, BA was born. 704 AM, Belinda began to hemorrhage. Talk about God. I'm on the hospital bed in the delivery room. And I hear someone crying. The, the, the mystery of God. I hear someone crying. And I open my eyes. Because I'm thinking that somebody died. I could feel the nurse pressing on my stomach. And this liquid running through me. But I looked up at her. And I, I asked her. Did somebody die? Why are you crying? And I'll never forget this nurse's face. She looked at me, I guess first of all, thinking she won't. She looked at me with surprise and then her eyes fell. She said, we can't stop your bleeding. I said, okay. The doctor, Dr. Jagger, came around behind her and he said, Belinda, I have got to go out. And his face was, she's awake. I have got to go out and tell your family, your husband, your five-year-old son, your parents, your sister, that we're losing you. We can't stop the blood that is wasting out of your body. Talk about Jesus. I remember looking him straight in his face from the bed, reaching out and touching his hand and saying, everything is going to be all right. Come on now. And now I'm going back to sleep. Some hours later, they took me up to the nursery. I wanted to see this big boy who almost took me up out of here. <laughs> 10 pounds. Oh, he should have been a twin. <laughs> and I looked over at my doctor's face, and it was flushed. I never asked him if he was a believer. I knew he was. But I guess at that time, seeing his patient losing in his mind her life, perhaps he had forgot to whisper a prayer. But guess who was praying? Mama. Yep. Daddy. Oh. Yes, sir. Sister, yes, even right. Dan Senior, everybody was praying. That was hemorrhage number one. I'm still standing. Come on now. So at age 37, and, and they had told me that you can't have no more children because you, you, you know, you, you don't want you bleeding out no more. You, know, you got a blood disorder. But at 37, Guess what? Oh, I call it a change of life thing. <laughs> I got pregnant. And we said, okay, you no, know, he's not supposed to have another child. But it was an unusual pregnancy. It was an ectopic, ectopic pregnancy. Pregnant on the machine, pregnant with no cycle. And that was it. But on Valentine's Day, February 14th, I was reading at home, reading the DJ Bread. We were just laughing and talking. And I get a phone call from the then president of the Women's Auxiliary for the District of Sohai. That's such an honor. Yes, ma'am. And no sooner than I hung up the phone to go back to reading to DJ and Bread, 
I felt this. Oh. And DJ was old enough and saw the expression on my face. He said, is something the matter? And I said, I need to get up. And I got up off the bed and proceeded into the bathroom and he cried out and said, Mommy, oh Mommy, you're bleeding. Made it to the restroom. You men may not know about this. You may have not, your wife may not have had a bleeding disorder or a miscarriage, but that was what was happening to me. And I had, Dan was in, Dan Sr. was in the other room and we called him in and I asked him to call the doctor and they said I had to bring what emptied the little baby to the hospital so that I could come and be taken care of. Still bleeding, we left. I will never forget the expression on Dan Sr.'s face. I, he was recalling 10 years before. He was remembering what had happened with Brett. And I assured him that everything was going to be all right. I'm still standing. Come on, man. Are you with me? I don't know if any of you, because see, issue, an issue of blood was just this woman's thing. There are many issues in our life. Medical issues of diabetes medical issues of cancer, medical issues of obesity. There are social justice issues. There are relationship issues. But I say to you this morning, if you just grab a little thread, just bend over, you may have to crawl, but just get down on your hands and knees and, and say, Jesus, I'm just catching a piece of your thread. And that took me into this third hemorrhage at 57 years old. The mystery of Jesus. And I had to have a serious talk with him. I said, okay, one, twice, but three times? What's wrong with this picture? You said I was healed. But this was a different kind. And a different situation how it came to be. Back in when I was 57, I could do yoga. I was in water aerobics. And that Thursday, I had a sharp pain go down the back of my neck, across my right side and down my arm. And I didn't think anything about it because I had a rotator uh, cuff tear. I had to give up my bowling ruby. Because <laughs> I wasn't going to have an operation. And ruby, no, I love the bowling. I gave that up because I wasn't going to have an operation for this rotator cuff. But by Sunday morning, February 12th, to be exact, BA said, I'm taking you to the ER. The pain was that bad. So here we are at Bethesda North in the ER. And you all know, sometimes when you go into the ER, you don't always get the best care. You don't always get the doctor that will go that extra mile. But even in I'm paying, I'm saying, Lord, this is the third time something has happened to me. I, whoever I see in there, you need to speak to them. I'm in a whole lot of pain here, and I don't know why. Interesting enough, 
I had the right ER doctor. He said, do you think you're having a heart attack? I said, mm-hmm. He said, when was the last time you had your mammogram? I said, I'm due for one in March. He said, we're going to control your pain, but I'm going to have you have a chest x-ray. The chest x-ray comes back. He says, this is rather strange. And Brett said, yeah, you're talking to the strange one. Your, there is something pushing up your lungs. Your lungs are elevated. We're going to do a CAT scan. They did the CAT scan. They did not tell me the results. They said, we need you to come back on Tuesday, which would have been Valentine's Day. After drinking the stuff, they wanted to get a clearer picture. I went back and they said, we want you to take these films with you. And I said, okay. That evening, 9.45, some things you don't forget. 9.45 p.m., my primary care doctor has never called me on the phone. And she said, Belinda, I have news. I have news you are not going to believe. And I said, one thing I like about you, you're always direct. Just give it to me. Are you listening? Say amen. Amen. She said, you do not have just one. You do not have just two. You have three abdominal aneurysms. And two of them are in places that you don't want them to be. Sometimes you'll see me touch you. I had one on my pancreas. I had one on my liver. And she said the other one was just hanging out in left field. And I said, one for the Father, one for the Son, and the third is the Holy Spirit. I'm covered. That's right. She said, I have already made an appointment for you to come see Dr. Amy Reed tomorrow. Bring those films that they gave you. I prayed. I said, Lord, here we are again. I am in your hands. Whatever it is, I'm your child. Yes. I give this to you. All I want for you is peace. <clears throat> the peace that surpasses all understanding. Everything else is signed, sealed, and delivered. That's right. You allowed me to get through at age 27 where I could raise my son, not just the baby, but the older boy. Then you got me through 37 and I lost the little girl because we did a temple, uh, a tissue sample. I lost the little girl. But here I am 20 years later with all of this same stuff inside of me, a little more difficult than before. But I give it to you. I'm just I am at peace. I want your peace that surpasses all understanding. I went to see Dr. Amy Reed, direct my surgeon. I think my surgeon. She explained the black and white pictures. She said, I'm not happy with these black and white pictures. We're going to take some more in color. But I want you to look at the circles of grooves, of grooves, big grooves, then smaller grooves, smaller and smaller and smaller. And she says, do you know what that tells me? I said, no ma'am. She said, it says to me that you have been bleeding in your body 
for over 10 years. And it is just settled in these places. And had you bled out, they never would have found you. I just threw my hands up to, the, to Jesus. And I thought about the woman with the issue of blood. I said, I'm not reaching down right now, I'm reaching up to say thank you, Lord, that I'm here at this place. I didn't bleed out. I'm being educated about what is going on inside of me. I just want peace. I'm still standing. Come on. When they went through the surgery, and she said, you know how they give you that report, your body is remarkable? That's a good thing. If you ever see remarkable, that's a good thing. She said, there is nothing wrong with your pancreas. There is nothing wrong with your liver. And we took out the one out of your pancreas. And, and I'm saying what you said. You said one was for the Father. We took Jesus that was hanging out in left field and prepared, repaired the other one. I just want to tell you, your body is remarkable. We have gotten rid of the three angels. I didn't wake up on that day, but when I woke up in my room, they said, the lady in this room over here done went crazy. I'm crazy. I guess you crazy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Not only for stopping the bleeding, but I'm remarkable. Thank you, Lord. For one more day. One more time. One more grace experience. One more story to tell. And I promised him. Wherever I go, I'm going to tell that story. Amen. I tell you, I'm cut from underneath my breastplate, underneath, all the way over to this side. They had to lift up and go down because the pancreas is in the lower part. I told them before I went into surgery, videotape me. I want everybody to see what God can do for you. I want to be a testimony to somebody that may be going through the same thing or just have another issue. So I stand here to tell the Love Community Church, I'm still standing. And I know one day I've got to answer the call, but guess what? Not today. Amen. For such a time as this, this is my time. Come on. He's blessed me to still be here, to do the ministry of chaplaincy, and to grow me as a preacher. I'm still here to serve God. I'm still here to rejoice. I'm still here to be thankful. I was saying to Liddy, I turned on that iTunes thing tape this morning, and it said, the joy. When I think about all he's brought me through, I got joy, 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 unspeakable joy. Even in the midst of our sister Karen, being with Jesus in heaven, we got joy because we got to know her. Yeah, we got to be in her presence. Yes. We are thankful, Lord, for the joy she brought into us. And I say to each and every one of us in here, whatever issue you got this morning, just catch on. Just catch on to the hymn of this God. And I guarantee you, you will be made whole. That's the message for this morning. You will be made whole. You're still standing. You're still able to carry on the ministry. I'm rejoicing in the Lord for what He's done for me. I told you, Kirk, Court laughs at me. I said, I'm 
65 and he's just opening up doors. He said, the work is not finished. I'm still standing for such a time as this. Let's give God some praise.